your holy presence, O oh God. Your glory, O oh God, surrounds us. The heavens, O oh God, are open above us, Lord. Angels ascending and descending, Lord. The trumpets are sounding, O oh God. There's a sound from heaven tonight. you, Lord, that you turn your face towards us. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Amen. Amen. I just want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, yesterday, uh, during our time of intercession and while I was praying, uh, the God, Lord gave me an impression uh, from the book of Genesis chapter 37 and it was about if we read from verse 3 
It says that now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his sons because he was a son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors. And when his brothers saw that his father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak to him peaceably. When I read this, when I, when I went home and I just read this passage of scripture, it says to me that before even Joseph could have the dream, his, brother, his, his, his father saw something in him. His father saw the divine inheritance. So he gave him this coat of many colors. And it says that before he could have the dream and tell his brothers what dream he had of how they were going to bow down to him, they had already hated him. And so when he gave the, 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 uh, the dream to them, it says that even at one point, Jacob came to him and said, how can you speak this to us to say that we are going to bow down to you? Are we, your mother, your father, your brothers, going to bow down to you? And Joseph did not reply to him. But it says that his father kept this saying in his mind. So his father knew that there was something about Joseph, that God was going to use him in a special way. And this coat that he put on him, it prophetically showed what he was going to be in the future, his divine inheritance. And so when the brothers took him and put him into the pit, they took that coat as a false report to the father, uh, sort of putting the, the animal's blood on it and saying to him, your son is dead. Joseph went through the pit experience. He went through the experience at Potiphar's house where he was falsely accused. He went into the prison where he was almost forgotten. But God knew what he had in store for him. And that coat that his father put on him those many years ago, it says it was almost 13 years later because Joseph was 30 when he rose to power in Pharaoh's palace. 13 years later, after the, when, when Joseph spoke to, the, to Pharaoh about the, about the famine, about the seven years, Pharaoh put a coat on him and gave him power. Told him that you, I will take charge. You'll be second in charge to me in this land. There was something that the father saw those many years ago when he was just a teenage boy. An inheritance that he gave to him. It says that the father kept the saying in his mind. And I'm sure that when he saw his son after the many years when his son was returned to him, or when he saw his son alive again, he said, God, I knew that there was something that I prophetically declared over him that will come to pass in the future. So even though that robe was given back to his father as a false report, when he went back and he saw a robe on his son, in a completely different position. And today I want you to know that God is looking upon you. He's looking upon this house. He's placing the robe. He placed the robe upon you already. So you may be at the moment going through a pit experience. You may be going through the, an, a, a, an experience like part of his house. You may be going through an experience like the one in the prison where you feel as though you've forgotten. But just remember, God still has that coat that he wants to put on you. And I believe that we as a house, this is the place where we are at right now. God, he says, I have not forgotten you. I am placing that robe upon you right now. It is a robe of favor. It's a robe that will rise you to power. It's a robe that as you speak prophetically into the nation, as you speak and whatever you say, God has this divine inheritance for us. So we're just going to pray today. And I pray that God will touch you wherever you are right now, in whatever situation you may find yourself in, however you may feel, whatever you may be going through, just know that there's a greater plan. There's a greater plan for you. And believe that there's a robe that is waiting for you, that you're going to place upon your life, that God's going to place upon your shoulders, that's going to cause you to rise from the position from where you are at right now. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, when we stand in your presence tonight, we do not look at our lives from the position of where we are at. 
We do not worship you or praise you from the position in where we are at right now. But Lord, we're looking, oh God, to where you are taking us. And so, Father, we look further into the future. We see, oh God, how you are placing this robe upon us. We see, oh God, how you are changing our position. And so I pray over your sons and daughters tonight. As they have come here, Lord, they've come, oh God, in, from many different circumstances. They stand here today maybe looking for an answer. Maybe just seeking your face, oh God, for you to say, Lord, where am I right now? What is my place in this, in this world right now, oh God? But I believe today, oh God, you're going to cause them to be victorious wherever they are, Lord. You're going to cause them to rise from their position into a place of power, into a place of God where they are able to declare the prophetic word. And we thank you. We just thank you tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We see you, God, in the prophetic power, God, this robe is being placed upon us, oh God, and our house. to the nations tonight, Lord. We believe in that, oh God. And we bless your holy name. We bless you, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord. Ah! Uh -huh. 
every morning, oh Father God, we declare for every morning, for every open door, I call you, I call you faithful. I just want to thank for every Lord. mountain.
We're going to take a moment just now and we're going to remember some of our brothers and sisters that are not well. Some of them are in hospital right now and we are trusting God that God is going to show up on their behalf in a miraculous way. But I want to proceed this prayer but by us spending some time just praying in the Spirit. Can we just pray in the Spirit just for a little while? See, sometimes when you, there's something, some warfare that you need to do, that you cannot just do it in the language, in English. You, you have to get into the Spirit because it's a place where Spirit calls out to Spirit and deep calls out to deep. So we just bless it. She la mando le che si io prima si hende. Yeah, yeah, this blessing, blessing, blessing. She la mama, 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 la mama, si io la mai. Kira ba 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 yende le le. Mama Sike Shala Mama Mandora Mama Mazete Leme Leme Riba Baba Yende Shira Mama Mazata La Raba Baba Yende Lebebe Sete La Baba Bakai Raba Baba Bosete Lebebe Hende Riba Baku Sete Lebebe Hende Reke Sira Baba Baba Tai La Raba Hande Father, you can intervene even in places that cannot be seen. So right now, hidden conditions, hidden conditions, right now, Lord, you are exposing underlying conditions. Right now, physicians are able to see in areas that they never were able to see. Father, we bring our sister Prakash before you right now. <clears throat> and right now, Father, you are exposing, you are helping to diagnose, oh God, hidden conditions in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, where physicians have missed the diagnosis, this time they're getting it right, Lord. You are, oh God, moving upon them. You are moving upon them. It is for the sake of your daughter. It is for the sake of your daughter. I pray, oh God, that every internal bleeding will stop completing completely right now. Every inflammation of the liver, oh God, will, oh God, oh God, be cleared in the name of Jesus. Every toxins, oh God, will be cleared in the name of Jesus. Every system in her body is starting to respond, Lord. Her body is going to start to produce blood on its own in the name of Jesus. Shakai Lamando Robo Sete. Le meke la bakai la mando robo sete li makai la basoto re be 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 ke shaka o robo bo 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 sete every weakness is leaving every weakness is leaving strength is coming strength is coming strength is coming oxygen is flowing through every oh God vital organ a oxygen is flowing. Through every limb in the name of Jesus, oxygen in the name of Jesus, breathe upon our Lord. 
Holy Spirits and ministering angels with healing, Lord, to just touch her body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe you right now for the turnaround. Right now, right now, right now for the turnaround. Right now, right now, a turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Your hand, oh God, you are Jehovah Rapha, and there's nothing too hard for my God. There is nothing too hard for my God. Father, we bring, oh God, our brother Kuban before you, even as he prepares to go for his operation on his spine. In the name of Jesus and his vertebrae, in the name of Jesus, we trust in you. Right now, move with a hand of favor over your son. Move with a hand of favor over your son. Give him, O oh God, a calmness of spirit. Give him, O oh God, a calmness of mind. In the name of Jesus, we thanking you for a successful operation and for the speedy recovery, Lord. He's going to be a testimony. Father, that the surgeons that are working on him, oh God, that the right ones are coming into the room and into that theater. Father, I pray, oh God, that they will come in, oh God. Oh God, you are sending specialists, oh God. You are sending senior specialists in the name of Jesus. We believe in you right now. In the name of Jesus, there will be no more pain in the body of your son. I pray today, O oh God, for a complete, O oh God, and a successful, O oh God, successful operation in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We bring our sister Doris before you, Lord. Every chest infection will clear up. Every symptom of asthma will clear up right now. I pray over the life of your daughter. You are removing, oh God, the spirit, oh God, the spirit, oh God, that tries to oppress her in the name of Jesus. You are giving her right now. You We shake that off. In the name of Jesus, even as she prepares to go in for her eye operation, Lord, we are trusting you that it will be completely cleared, oh God, a complete restoration of her sight. In the name of Jesus, we believe in you right now that you are a mighty God and there is nothing too hard for you. And so we pray in the life of our da your daughter, we speak peace. We speak the peace of God. We speak the peace of God. We speak the grace of God. We speak the boldness and confidence and faith in God. Let our faith begin to arise in the name of Jesus. We believe in you tonight. That what you said, you will do. And so we say it's done. We say it's done. Testimony after testimony. Testimony after testimony. In the name of Jesus, we believe that there's a healing virtue. There's the balm of Gilead in the house. Oh God, that there is a balm, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sickness. Oh, believe. Divine health. Divine health. Divine help in the name of Jesus. We speak it. We speak it. Shalababa wos. Hilababa sete. Yes. Yes. We need a fresh wind, the power of heaven, pour your spirit out, and pour your spirit out, the holy anointing. 
wanting the power of your presence pour your spirit out pour your spirit out cause we need a fresh ring the power of heaven pour your spirit out pour your spirit out your holy anointing the power of your prayer Spirit out, Lord. Pour your spirit out, Lord. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit that is in this place. So I pray for each one of your sons and your daughters that have come in today. Some have come in with needs. Some have come in with requests. Some have come in trusting you to do a miraculous work in their lives. So, Father, show up. Show up, O oh God. Just minister to them at the point of their need. Minister to them at the point of their need. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. And everybody said amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Our God's able. Amen. Amen. Thanks to the worship team. Amen. Amen. We believe in God that God ministers to us today. Amen. And so we have uh, Brother Neil, and uh, thereafter Lorenzo will, will share with us a word, amen. They both got 10 minutes each, amen. So they're going to work it out in 10 minutes, amen, whereas I'm taking the mic, amen. Amen. So when you hit 10 minutes, you know, if you see me standing, amen, bless the Lord. Amen. Page for you. <laughs> okay, greetings in the name of Jesus. Uh, I just want to thank Pastor for uh, and the leadership for affording me the opportunity to share the Word of God. It's always uh, exciting when we can share the Word of God, uh, but more especially for me, it's it's challenging. And and sometimes when we are about to share the Word of God, we go through one of those most challenging days. Amen. But we know that the devil is a liar. And God is going to do what he said he will do. Okay, let's just pray before us. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are and what you mean to us. But Father, more especially this evening, I bring my life before you. I lay it at your altar. And I say, Lord, speak, Lord. Use me as an oracle. And all that you need to say this evening, that you would say through me this day, Lord. Hide me under the... The, the cross and hide me, Father God, and cover me in your blood and let every word that comes out from my mouth come from your throne room of grace. And those that sit under the, my voice, Lord, let them have receptive love to be able to hear that which you are saying in this season, Lord. Thank you and we ask these mercies in your precious and holy name. Amen. Okay, uh, the first thing I want you to say is, I am in Christ Jesus. Okay, I take my reading from uh, John chapter 14 and verses 10 to 14. Believest thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of but the Father that dwelleth in me. He that doeth the works, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, O oh, Else believe me for the very work's uh, sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me for the works that I, that I do shall he 
he also do, and greater works than, than these shall, shall he do. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. You know, when I was reading this portion of uh, scripture, uh, most of us, sometimes when we look at ourselves, we look at our faults and our failures. We don't see ourselves through the eyes of God. And God said that he can do greater things through us. If we, if, we are, if we are in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus is in the Father, then we are in the Father. Amen. And if we are in the Father and the Father is in us, that means whatever he places in us, it's coming from him. If we begin to focus on getting to a place where we can have time with God, in order to do that which God has called us, every one of us know that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. We, we know that God has not just placed us on the earth just to exist. We're here to, to live and live out a life that he has purpose for our lives. And I believe that even as we begin to focus on who God is and who he is in our lives and who we are in him, we'll be able to do all that he called us to do. Amen. And I believe that when we, when we, when we start focusing on the things and the circumstances that are around us and focus on the God who is in us, we're able to accomplish much. If God said there's greater things, if Jesus said there's greater things than I have done, you will do, you'll be able to do. There is greater things that you are able to do, but not on your own, because of the Father, because of Christ. He says, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be done. If you ask, but you've got to have God in you. You've got to have the Spirit of God in you. So you can't ask things and expect things to happen if you're not connected to God. You can't expect God to work on your behalf if you're not connected to him. I mean, if you look at uh, before this portion of Scripture, Jesus raised uh, Lazarus from the dead. Jesus uh, uh, cured the wo woman with the issue of blood. She, had, she was going 12 years with that issue. He raised uh, Jairus' daughter. So there is, there, there, there is things that he's able to do. If he can raise the dead and he's telling you greater things than, than what that which I have done, you can do. So there's, there's things that are dead that you can cause to come back into life. There's, there's sicknesses and you, if you speak the word believing, you know that there will healing will take place. We know the power is in the name of Jesus. We know the authority and the power we have, but sometimes we restrict ourselves and limit ourselves to the situations we find ourselves in. You know, uh, when I was uh, going through this, uh, the scripture, I was reminded that God said that out of this house, the government can change. I heard that. I don't know if you all heard that this week. If this is what God is saying, and it's a season where we, we can't be done by one person. It can't be done by pastor. It can't be done just by the leadership. It's going to take every one of us. But God didn't place you in this place just because he felt like. He placed you because he saw something in you. He knows what is deposited in you. And if you can tap into that which is deposited in you, you can change the nation. Imagine we have the power to change the nation. We have that power to change the nation. But we look at ourselves, we limit ourselves, we look at where we come from. And, but it's, if we are in Christ and we are a new creation, we're no longer looking at ourselves from the earth, the, the earthly physical body. We are spirit beings in an earthly body, filled with the spirit of God, able to do all that he's called us to do. You know, when I, was, when I was standing here and I was just thinking about the words that came, I was also reminded from verse 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 19. And he said, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And he did did not let none of the words fall to the ground. I was looking at this thing and I was sitting, I was just uh, uh, in service and I was reminded that Anna said, Lord, if you give me this child, I will give it back to you. And I was reminded of Pastor's testimony. His father said, Lord, if you give him his speech, I'll give him back to you. Sometimes things happen and uh, for a reason. We do not know. The, God knows the end from the beginning. When he was doing that work that he did then, he already knew. He had the end in mind. So when he says, and I'm, I'm reminded, you know, pastor always speaks in the prophetic. He always declares things. I've seen it come. It happens, it happens. And the one thing I believe, there's a spirit upon him that none of the words 
that he says will fall to the ground. But you know why we can have that confidence in that? Because God's word will not return void. If he's speaking that which God has placed in his heart, it's not going to fall to the ground. Because God will establish his word. I believe this ministry, this church, that we are, we are in a place where God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above, more than we can think, hope, or even imagine. But we've got to focus on him. We in the right place. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I think you know being in Fort House for me is the most exciting thing in life. Being involved in this ministry, being connected to this man of God, reminds me of the things that God can do. You know when Pastor Maggie was sharing, uh, the one thing came in my mind. Uh, but I'm no I'm nothing like Joseph. Uh, I, I w- if I have a glimpse of the anointing that he had, I'd be able to accomplish much. I was reminded when I was 15 years old, I gave my heart to the Lord. I strayed and I went uh, away. But when I was 28, I came into ministry, 13 years later. And I don't think sometimes uh, uh, scriptures are just there for a reason. Sometimes they give you a time to do an s- uh, introspection. Look at your life and see what God has given you. When I was sitting here in the time of worship, I was praying, Lord, this let it be a reminder of me, to me, that greater things you can do through my life. And I believe that, you know, as long as I'm breathing, God is able to use me. I have every testimony. Not, I don't have to be in church. I don't have to stand in front of the pulpit and, and say, wherever I go, wherever I walk, the people I encounter, day in, day out, you have the opportunity to change life. That was Joseph's uh, walk. Before he could come into the palace, before he could come into being second in charge, he, there were situations he found himself in. But he never changed who he was. He spoke that which he was supposed to speak. And if we can take that little from there and know that wherever we find ourselves, it can be in the pit, it can be in the prison, but we can bring a word that will bring life. It can change the situation around. We have the opportunity to change the world. Amen? We have the opportunity to change the world. Every one of us, every one of us, in locked up into you, you have the opportunity. You can't change the world just by one go, but you can change it one person at a time. Every day you would encounter at least one person, at least one person, whether you walk past them, you can greet them. Sometimes if you just greet someone, they'll stop and talk to you, and they'll share something because they they see something in you. They see the Spirit of God in you. They know if they're going through something tough, you'll be able to give them an answer. You'll be able to give them a word from God that they need. I encourage you today to know that we are called to be the ones that would reflect Christ. Christ is in us. God is in us. If wherever you go, he should be seen and not you. Amen. Hope you were blessed. Amen. Amen. You all blessed this evening. Amen. I just want to thank Pastor Gerald and the eldership and leadership for the opportunity for us just to share a word today. Can we pray? Father, I come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this time that even as I would minister the word from your throne room, O oh Father God, that, that, Father, as your people will receive it, O oh God, that they'll take it to heart, O oh God, and use it, O oh Father God, in every aspect of their life. So bless us as we continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So all I can say is, wow, 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 after such an amazing covenant month. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm sure you all agree when I say that this was something, something special about this covenant. Amen? From the word we received every week, the weekly fellowship after church, and then to our covenant celebration day, where God moved so mightily. Amen? And I'm still, I'm still trying to understand what happened. I'm still trying to fathom this, but I know it was God. Amen? Pastor, I remember, encouraged us from the onset in September, and he said, trust in God and be expectant for God to speak and to minister to us, which is what we saw happen. Amen? Now, I was really inspired through everything that transpired over our covenant month, but I was inspired even with the unity and love displayed in everything that was done in the preparation for our covenant celebration. From beginning to the end, I saw people coming together, finding their place where they could assist. 
Uh, we saw people doing stuff that they never even do in their own houses. So thank God that they chose to do it in the house of God. Amen. Amen. We saw individuals use their talents and giftings to bring a vision to reality. Amen. Did we have challenges and setbacks? Most definitely. But understanding the reason why and for who we were doing this continued to keep us aligned. Amen. This got me thinking and convinced as to how much more we as a house can achieve and accomplish when in unity. And therefore, today, I've titled my word, Building in Unity. Amen? Amen. So, when we talk about building, so today I want to talk about, and I know you might have memories of this here, and, I'm gonna, and I chose the example of, of building a puzzle, right? So, I remember the time, uh, I don't know how far back you can remember, but I remember a time when I was young, and we were building puzzles, and, you, and I don't know about you, but you remember the time when there was that one piece that you couldn't find that was supposed to fit here? And then you started getting irritated. And then everything was just, you know, you started blaming everybody when you were younger. And then somebody came along, a sibling, your parent, a loved one, and they found that piece. And they placed it there. Now, can you remember how you threw tantrums? And how you went really crazy? And you, and you at that moment, didn't realize that they helped you to complete that. Amen? But you were just looking at the fact that I was building this. Who gave you the right to come and put that piece? Amen? But you see, I looked at this also as we got older. We matured. And if we did puzzles, and if somebody came along and after hours and sometimes after days that puzzles lying there, and somebody comes along and finds that piece and puts the piece there. You see, when we become mature and when we understand, you know, really that we need the help, that that person that comes and put the right piece there, we are grateful. Amen? We are thankful. Because without them at that very moment, that puzzle would not have been completed. So just like that, you know, uh, Psalms 133 says, you know, as, as I said, building unity. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And when I believe that when we dwell in unity, we can do so much. Amen? We can accomplish so much. And today, it's really about us as a ministry. You see, in life, we all have our own individual thoughts and desires in building our lives, our homes, our families, our careers. But as Christians, we should understand that it's, that it's the Lord's plans that prevails and not ours. Amen? Proverbs 19 verses 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Amen? Now, you see, in all of our building and planning, we tend to forget or leave the building of the house of the Lord for last. Which in fact, it should be on top of our list. It should be our priority. There, as there is a promise that when we build the Lord's house, He will surely build your house, my house, our house. Amen? This is a promise from God. Now, God made many promises in the, in the word of God. And I'm going to mention a few. God made a promise to Noah. To maintain his relationship with creation. By not destroying the earth with a flood again. And he said in Genesis 9 verses 11. I establish my covenant with you. That never again shall all flesh be cut off by waters of the flood. And never again there sh shall be a flood to destroy the earth. God's promise. Then God made a promise to Abraham. To make him the father of a great nation. He was faithful to that covenant. Even when Abraham and Sarah were old and barren having no children, but God came through for them. Amen? Genesis 12, verses 2 to 3 says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Another promise. See, our God is a promise. He's a promise keeper. Amen? Then, God's covenant with Israel was to be their God for them to be his people. He was faithful to that covenant, even when they were unfaithful to him. Now, therefore, in Exodus 19, verse 5 to 6, it says, Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured, my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall go to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Another promise from God. Amen? So we see that God is a promise keeper. But today, I want to talk about God's promise to David. 
Now, this journey begins in 2 Samuel 7, verses 1 to 16. And, and I'm not going to read it because of time. And we see here where Nathan the prophet would hear from the Lord, and the Lord would speak to Nathan. And this is where it begins, where Nathan will then interpret to, uh, to, uh, to David and, and speak about the promise that God had for David and his lineage, which is Solomon. Now, what we know is, okay, I'm just going to read it a little bit. And it said, um, it said, Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it for the Lord is with you. So that night, the, wo uh, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. And this is uh, 2 Samuel, verse 7. So the word of the Lord came. So go tell my servant David that this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I bought the Israelites up out of Egypt of the day. I have been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture and from the following, the flock, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all the enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home for their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I have appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you the rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord, will, the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise you up Raise up your offspring to succeed. You will come with your own body and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will, who will build a house for my name. And I will establish the throne for his kingdom forever. Now we see where there's a promise to David that, that he would be the one that would begin the building of the temple. But the completion would come from his son Solomon. Now we understand now that David was a man after God's own heart. Amen? Now King David desired to build a house for the Lord. But God had told him that his task would not be accomplished by him, but by his son, King Solomon. Because as the word of God says that David was a warrior and, and he shed blood. And, and the Lord used this to tell him that the fulfillment of the building of the temple will be done by Solomon. Now, David was a king and had authority to do as he pleased, but he listened to the Lord. He instead began making preparations in order to prepare for Solomon to continue and complete the building of the temple. Now, the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 22, and it leads up to ch chapter 28, and we see where David starts to prepare. And he, he starts to prepare from getting the materials for the house of the Lord. Uh, and, and he says, I know my son is young. I'm just paraphrasing. I know my son is young, but I am preparing for him when the time is right that he'll begin the preparation and the building of the temple. You see, David did this with no regret had no hidden agenda, but with love, and he supported his son Solomon with the transition. Amen? Now what we see here is that, and if you look at First Chronicles chapter 22 and 28, that David brought in skilled, skilled um, men, unskilled men. He even in, in uh, uh, First Chronicles chapter 28, he talks about how he even moved, um, uh, uh, how he divided the priest and he divided the different uh, sorts of people. And it says in verses 20, he says that the divisions of the priests and Levites are ready for all the work of the temple. And every willing person skilled in every craft will help you in all the work. The officials and all the people will obey your every command. Now, David did the preparation. There's three things that I acknowledge here of David. David was obedient to God. Amen. David prepared for the next generation. Amen. And David brought all people together, skilled, unskilled, in order to prepare to help Solomon to build the temple. Now, I believe that this was done in unity. Amen. There was a unity. And, and as the word of God says, where there's unity, God commands a blessing. So we see here that God gave an instruction to David. David obeyed. He fo he followed whatever God said, and we saw the completion of the word of God, the promise of the word of God coming to pass. Now today, Church of God, as I said, I've titled this 
Our message for today, building unity. In order for us to continue the work of God, we got to continue building in unity in everything. I saw a true reflection of us reflecting Christ. Amen? This weekend and every time that we gathered over this covenant time, this is what we saw, that we know that God is love. Amen? Potter's house is built on love. Amen? And we saw this. And today, as we continue to build in unity, as we build God's house, your breakthrough, for, uh, your breakthrough in healing is when you build a house. Your breakthrough for your prosperity is when you choose to build a house. Amen? Your breakthrough in your healing is when you choose to build a house. Amen? Now, the truth is, except the Lord builds the house, we the laborers build in vain. Amen? We need to choose to build the house of God. Seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, and all else will be added unto us. Is it easy? No. But there's a big task ahead of us. Amen? But I know as Potter's house, there's word that was shared over the past few weeks and, 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 and this month. And it's time for us to get ready. Amen? We should be ready for what God is about to do. And as Neil even shared, it's not just about one person or just a few people. It's about all of us. That when we come together, we're stronger. Amen? When we come together and when we understand what the vision is for the house and when we understand what the mandate is for the house, I believe that together when we all align in accord, in unity, we can do great and mighty things. So just like what David did, I believe that we are sowing seed right now for generations to come. Amen? We're going to be obedient to God and as our Father leads us, amen, we're going to be obedient and we're going to trust in God. So I pray you were blessed. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's just bow our heads together. Father, we love you. We thank you for the constant reminder that you are with us. Constant reminder that you are fulfilling every promise, every word, every utterance and declaration. Your word says if we would decree a thing, it will be established and light will come upon our ways. So we thank you for both Neil and for Lorenzo and thank you for the word that they shared and the encouragement that they brought. Thank you that there's a stirring in our hearts. And so we believe, O oh God, that there is an unfolding of purpose. There's an unfolding of the designs of God. There's an unfolding of the purposes of God. And so we pray a blessing over the, your sons today. May they grow in wisdom. May they grow in grace. May they experience open heavens. May you continue to speak to them and through them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, even as we go into this week. Show up, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, for people at their jobs show up, at their, uh, at their place of business show up, at, uh, O oh God, at their universities show up, Lord, in schools show up, Lord, in their homes, in communities show up, Lord. We believe this is a season for the manifestation of the purposes and the will of God, even in the amongst your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Bless.